Section 2. So 5 2 is going to be parallel and perpendicular lines. Perpendicular has the word pen in the middle of it. Perpendicular. If you're going to spell it, might as well spell it right. So we start out this section here with kind of a bunch of definitions, kind of like we had in the last time around. And I'm just going to start with the word plane. So not the airplane, but in geometry type stuff. A plane is, or what would be an example of one in the room? Anybody thoughts? The floor. The floor is an example because the floor is flat. flat. Yep, so a plane is going to be like a flat surface, like a two-dimensional, so it goes to the left and right and forward and back, surface that's flat. Uh, so a plane would be an infinite flat surface. Our room is not infinite. Um, Wait, like, it stops. Like planes and like shapes and stuff, they're not infinite. With... So technically, you could say the floor is not an example of a plane because it doesn't go on forever. A, a plane in geometry is going to be a flat surface that, if it could, would go on for forever. Kind of like a line, if you draw a line and you throw an arrow on both ends, that line goes on forever. So now, next thing is going to be parallel lines. If you had two lines that are parallel, maybe I should do this here. Uh, the symbol for parallel is often just like two vertical lines kind of side by side like that, although they should go down the same length. So two parallel lines, something like that. Um, if we have those, these are going to be, the book defines it as two lines in a plane that never meet. So two lines in a plane. that never meet. You could also say that as though they never cross. So two lines that never come together. So if we were to kind of go back to how we were writing lines yesterday, if we would say the line AB, so you have the A and the B with the ear over the top. If that were to be parallel to line CD, It would look something like, so here's my first one, I'll say that's A and that's B. Do you agree that would be line AB? Then line CD has to be, you know, kind of stay in that same distance away. So something like that. So C and D. That they'll never cross. Make sense? No? Yeah. Once in a while, you'll have somebody argue that a line, I wouldn't put this in your notes if I were you, but they'll argue that like this and this, that those are parallel because they don't cross, but it's that whole, if you would extend them, this line keeps going for forever, that one keeps going for forever, they would eventually cross. This next part is something that I really liked in geometry. This, this for me, was the really fun stuff. Uh, so transversal, it's called. So transversal. Math is fun. You just need to find the joy. Uh, okay, so transversal is going to be a line that crosses two or more parallel lines. So a line that crosses two or more parallel lines. I liked these because they were kind of a challenge. That we're going to go on and start saying, like, well, which angles are are equal and then they'll give you like a couple angles and you have to find other angles. That was the stuff I always got a kick out of. But So I'm going to try to draw two parallel lines. That looks fairly decent. Um, but if you have two parallel lines, the transversal then would be this orange line here that crosses those. And ideally my line would be extended a little bit further below that. I'll maybe give it another shot. I'm going to extend this a little bit longer. But something like that. And now, if you know that those two green lines are parallel, it allows you to figure out, well, which angles are going to have to be congruent, which is the math word for equal. So I'm going to go through a number angles first. So I'm going to just kind of do left and right, going kind of from top to bottom. So I'm going to say angle 1 and angle 2. Then I have angle 3 and angle 4. And angle 5 and angle 6. And then last 7 and 8. And we're going to start coming up with, okay, now what are... Eventually, you go on and, 
in math class and you try to come up with proofs. Why does this angle have to equal or be congruent to this other angle? Like for angle one, what angle looks like it's the same as angle one? Angle three. Wait, no, angle five. Angle five is, and? Seven. You have another one? You just holler it out. So <coughs> not a seven. Two pushed but, around. But one and five and eight. So maybe I should be marking these. So like one, five, eight. And one other angle should be the same as number one. Four. 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 Yep. And like right now, you're probably just looking at me like they look equal, but they've actually... We've done like math proofs that they have to be equal and so on. But they have names for these angles. And I'm going to go through and try to name some of these suckers. So first one is going to be alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles are congruent. I just said it a minute ago, congruent in math just means equal. equal. It means they're the same. Um, so now if we were to look at those, interior means inside. you agree that angle 3, that circle 1, is kind of inside the lines? Or outside would maybe more be like number 1 or something. So the interior, we're looking for something that's inside. But it also has to be alternate. So it's going to be 6. So if I have my 3 here, my 6 is going to be the other alternate interior angle that's congruent to that. So I could write, if I wanted to, example... Or maybe just say angle 3 is congruent, the equals with a little squiggly over it, the tilde. Angle 3 is equal to angle 6. Or if you're doing that same sort of thing, you could say, or angle 5 is congruent to, anybody see the other one? Yeah, yeah, 4, good job. So the next one they're going to say, they call them corresponding angles. So corresponding. So corresponding angles are congruent. So corresponding angles, we need to figure out, okay, so now what's kind of the pattern with those? Um, with those, I can just squeeze it in. Uh, if I'm looking at angle number one, so angle number one up there. Angle five is going to be the corresponding angle because we have that, our green lines are parallel, so you're kind of going with what's above the line that's parallel and on the left side of the transversal. Fair enough? So one example would be one and five. Let me uncircle those. So corresponding angles, you could say angle one is congruent to angle five. What would be another example of corresponding angles? Maybe... Go for it, Abby. Six and two. Six and two. Nice. Do people see how six and two are kind of in the same position? Kind of the upper right of where the orange hits the green. So I'm going to say angle two is congruent to angle six. So four and eight. Ooh, nice. Four and eight would be another. So does that make sense for everybody? Kind of the bottom right of the orange and the greens. So angle four is congruent to angle eight. And Jaden, you had the other one, right? Three and seven. three and seven, because three and seven are both kind of in the bottom left, you know, of where a green meets the orange. So angle three is congruent to angle seven. So the next pair that we're going to look at are pairs are going to be vertical angles. They call them so vertical. So vertical angles are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent. And now I just am kind of hurting for space, but vertical angles are what we were looking at before. So one example of vertical angles are going to be 1 and 4. Or at the very beginning, said, okay, what's another angle equal to 1? And So 1 and 4 would be an example of vertical angles. So, so we could say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. What do you think, 2 and 3, is that another pair? Yep, because 2 and 3, they're kind of like diagonal from each other is how I kind of always looked at it. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Nice job. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So you have two more pairs. 5, 8, 6, and 7. 5 and 8, 6 and 7, we all agree? Yeah. Okay. So then, so angle 5 is congruent to angle 8. And then 
angle 6 is congruent to angle 7. I had to squeeze in them out of space on my page. All right. Everybody have it copied down? Okay. So congruent, trying to drive the point home, congruent just means equal. So congruent segments would be two line, well, two segments that are the same length. So congruent segments, uh, two line segments, of the same length. You could have like this line segment you know, and maybe say that that's going to be A and B, total lack of creativity. JB here for Justin Bieber. Um, a, B, is congruent to JB Dean. So midpoint. Um, that's going to be the middle of a segment. So actually, I want to say two things from this. So it's the middle of a segment. So you can't have the middle of a line, the middle of a line that just keeps going on forever. Um, you could have the middle of a segment. And then it's a point that divides the segment into two equal or two congruent segments. So it divides a segment into two congruent. Or you could put an equal after that if you wanted to, just if your brain's not tripping on the congruent, um, into two congruent segments. So if we were to have, we can make it an A, B this time. But then if we put the M in here, if M is the midpoint, then that segment A, M would have to be congruent to B, M. So that would be true if M were the midpoint. If we have a segment bisector, by means two, so we want to take and cut a segment into two parts. Our bisector has to go through that midpoint, has to go through M. So a segment bisector Okay, so a segment bisector is going to be a line through the midpoint of a segment. A line through the midpoint. of a segment. So you have the luxury of having the picture right above, but um, I'll maybe just quick do a different one. I need to have a segment, so maybe we'll call this one, I don't know, P, Z. And if we put a midpoint right in the middle, the line has to go through that midpoint. It doesn't have to be vertical, so it could be really any line, but that would be an example of a segment bisector. And we could put labels on it if we wanted to, maybe a Q. But you could say QM, the line QM is the segment bisector of that. If we were to change that slightly and say if instead of a segment bisector, we want a perpendicular bisector, what would my green line have to look like for it to be a perpendicular bisector? Marielle. Okay. You guys used to that word perpendicular? Two things are perpendicular if they hit and the angle is 90 degrees. Very nicely done. So I'm going to first go through and say uh, perpendicular. Uh, so perpendicular. Um, so if two things are perpendicular, the way that they draw that, the symbol for that, is they do a horizontal line, then a vertical line that kind of comes down and hits it in the middle. Um, kind of like the bottom part of like your hangman thing if you're playing hangman with somebody. But uh, if you have uh, perpendicular and then if you have lines, yeah, upside down capital T, lines or segments, spelled segments wrong, let's fix that. So if you have perpendicular lines or segments, 
arrays. The key to those is they cross at a uh, right angle. I'm going to say right and then throw 90 degrees in parentheses. So, so perpendicular lines, they have to hit at a right angle. So then the very last part is perpendicular bisector, and then we're done. So perpen bisector. For that, it's going to be a line that crosses a segment through its midpoint and forms a 90 degree angle. So a line that crosses a segment at its midpoint and forms a 90 degree angle. So if I put in a line segment, give it a midpoint, so that should be my midpoint a little bigger. It should be a perpendicular bisector. Do you guys remember what symbol they put where these two things cross? Can make it into a little box look good?